Now some news coming out of Nigeria in the last hour. One of the hour. worst disasters on the African continent in recent memory. 116 people, including 85 South Africans, were killed. On television, they were showing us that the building had been bombed. And they were showing us this aircraft. We would give family cash. Basically, we were silencing them. The families were lied to. The aeroplane story is just pure life. The building collapse is a good example of everyday life under TV Joshua. It's just a series of cover-ups. Would you like to visit the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Lagos, Nigeria? This foreign visitors would come from all across the world. He would send people and say, go and see what they charge at a five-star hotel in America. Like, I'm worth that. Like, they can't come here and expect God to give them something for nothing. The guest house was a huge business industry. People were also desperate for healing. They would pay this ridiculous amount. That day, I was working in the office. He sent me to go and call someone. I kind of went into the church auditorium and I, I just felt like this dust in the air. I was close to his office, one of the disciples. He ran inside and he started saying, the building came down, the building came down. I remember running towards there and it's just complete chaos. No one really understands what's actually happened. That was where 99% of the guests he had then we are lodged. T.B. Joshua blocked the site immediately. He was trying to hide how brutal it was. Even the emergency units, they never allowed them to come in at first. So because of that, there were critical cases where people were trapped. I even witnessed one of the guests that came. He was trapped in the rubble there. He was holding his leg. A church worker like me told the guy that the only option is they are going to cut off his leg. They had to bring this chainsaw. Issues like that was not handled without T.B. Joshua's awareness. He's the one that gave that instruction. The next thing I will hear is, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, go and take your camera. T.B. Joshua wanted me to film. He prioritized filming over rescuing people. Then they put in this halogen light. When I entered that hole, oh my God, you could hear people and their voices are fainting. Initially, the press weren't allowed to go in, but after a while, we tried to get things organized. The church was pulling out people, showing to the external media team that they are saving people. Then, they hit the dead bodies. So when it was 8.30 to 9 p.m., they asked everybody to leave. That was when the real work was done. All the hands, the legs, the heads, scattered bodies, oh my God. I can't count the bodies that was brought out. We got into a bus and there was like the smell. Someone told me that this bus is full of dead bodies and we're transporting them at night so that the press can't see during the day. The whole system was just to protect the image of the church and TV show. He watched those tapes and I can tell you, I never saw an atom of compassion he could see a man die and never feel it. Emmanuel TV, God with us. It was Sunday afternoon. TV Joshua came, it was a life service. I received a phone call that there was a jet here at the church, hovering around the building, passing over the building four times at a very low rate before the building collapsed. So we are going to show you the video. A strange aircraft flies over the building 
at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Nine minutes later, the strange aircraft returns. This is the moment of the incident. On television, they were showing us that the building had been bombed. And they were showing us this aircraft. Don't be scared. You are not the target. I'm the target. I know my art has not yet come. My daughter died in the place where I thought it's safe. Because the Bible said, bring your child in the way of the Lord. I made sure that they were always in church. I didn't know that I was taking them to church to be killed. That part I was not expecting. A delegation from this Nigerian church, they came, they pronounced my sister as passed on. I didn't have a chance to say goodbye to her. The instruction was I needed to assist in going around to these families within South Africa whose children, husbands or wives had died at the building to go and give money, bags of money. We would tell them they mustn't speak to media, they mustn't give reports or anything. Basically, we were silencing them. When they came, we asked, why are you giving us money? We were told it's a gift. I said, no, this is not a gift. You are trying to, to buy our silence. When we refused taking the money, he started threatening us. I'm a prophet in Joshua. I know you, I know who you are. It says, if you focus on what you have lost, you might lose everything. Now he's threatening me that my whole family will go down the same way my daughter went down. You start asking questions. What are you hiding? What really happened? I can tell you the honest truth. On the 12th of September, somebody working in the maintenance department went to that guest house. As he was there, he realized that that building was unstable. It was shaky. They told us then that, don't say what you know. He knew that there was something wrong with the building, but they were managing it. There was no plane that dropped bombs. It was structural failure. Families suffered a huge injustice because it came out later that actually floors were added without permission. So it was obviously a structural error. It's difficult for me to put my hands on the number of people that lost their lives. He has a lot of blood in his hands. The death of people doesn't mean anything to him. The coroner found that TB Joshua must be criminally liable for whatever happened there. He kept on skipping court. The whole case was postponed, postponed over and over again. It's like he's been protected by who, I don't know. He would give me money, me personally, drop it in this person's car. He bought the whole system. He never even set his foot in court to come and answer for what happened. No one has been arrested. All we hear is lies and more lies. My daughter was buried alive. The pain is too much. I'm still waiting for justice. <laughs>